I want to begin with some thank yous uh, for specifically this uh, football season. You know, first to our students. Uh, we asked our students to come out and pack the booth, and they did come out. They returned in numbers that we hadn't seen in, in quite some time. Uh, we averaged around 3,000 students a game, and that was three times what we did a year ago and double what we did the, the year before that. So that's not where we want to be, but I think it's a great start with our students to have 3,000 in there supporting their fellow students, our student athletes. So excited about that. And those students give us the home field advantage that you need to, in the Big 12 to compete. So <coughs> students ener energize the rest of the fans that are there. So they are important to us. And again, I thank them for coming out. Also, we really should start with our student athletes. I I'm really uh, thankful for the football players, particularly those seniors that have, you know, have been through so much and then bought into Coach Miles and his staff and their style of coaching and their way of playing the game. Uh, I think you heard Coach Miles say throughout the season how impressed he was with the, with the young man and, you know, it's, it's a challenge to accept a new coaching staff and get people settled in and the change and, you know what, these kids, these young men uh, embraced it. As Coach talked about, you know, they came to work every day and they worked hard and they tried extremely hard. And you know what? We saw some successes on the field because of that. And, and we also saw, you know, weaknesses, uh, you know, throughout the season as well. So, but I am thankful for those student athletes. As Coach Miles said, they are going to be part of this building part, the process. They are part of it. They were the first block. And, Again, I have great respect for them and, and wish all of them well, whether some of them will have the professional opportunity, uh, but most of them will go on in, into life and hopefully use all the things they've learned here in KU athletics, KU football, and at the University of Kansas to, to have a, a, a fantastic, wonderful life. So that's the ultimate goal of what we do here. You know, I, I have to thank the fans. Uh, again, they have had a decade of, of football, um, uh, that has not been the best. Uh, we've seen the attendance dwindle through the years, uh, but they came back this year, and they came back in a big way. And again, it's a first step of building, the pro building our program. Uh, when we have more success, we expect to have more fans. But I will tell you, we had a 74.3% increase in attendance in David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium this year. 237,000 fans. Uh, came and this is the highest season since 2013. So we have taken a step there. We've got to do more and again we will continue to work in our marketing departments and our tickets office and our promotions area to reach out to fans, those who have not been back to our stadium in a year, in a few years to get them back. And, and then also reach out to the younger fans who are a national challenge to get engaged and we're gonna to continue to reach out to them and get them engaged in our football program. It's all part of what we're doing to try to build this uh, program. And, and I think we all were encouraged by the sellout for the Kansas State game, for the Dillon Sunflower Showdown, right? We had a sellout. We haven't had that in the past. We haven't had that in the recent past. So, you know, that was a huge impact on our program. It showed me, as a relatively new athletic director, what all the Kansas loyalists have told me is that, hey, when we have some success, when there's hope in the program, our fans will come back. So, you know what? I think we've made some steps there. I've seen our fans respond, and we're looking forward to working uh, harder to get them engaged and keep them engaged in the future. Uh, you know, I want to I want to thank our staff because when you put on the football program, in, in particular with that operation, uh, it takes everybody pulling together. So we have a tremendous staff here, and they do an outstanding job. And I'm I'm honored and proud to work with them. We will continue to find ways to make uh, our stadium experience better, our fan experience better. Uh, but we're working very hard of it, hard at it, and I'm really proud to work with the with the uh, people on our staff. So I want to thank them. You know, I'll, I want to thank our other head coaches and assistant coaches. You know, I've been uh, focused and, and outwardly focused about football for my first 16, 17 months. Okay. We talk about it in our monthly department meetings. I think our coaches and assistants understand that. But from the outside, sometimes it may look like football is all we care about. 
that is not the case. And I appreciate our head coaches and assistant coaches in this department understanding that message and appreciating the fact that they know we have to build that program in order to make everybody else better. So I, I thank them. I thank them for their support as we, again, work to build our football program for the benefit of our program and our university. Um, on a broader note, I'm excited about the uh, economic impact we've had on, on our, com our university community and, and the Fayetteville community. Uh, when you look at this Dillon Sunflower Showdown alone, the estimated econo economic impact is 5.8 million for that weekend. And that's just on the people that traveled in for that game. And that's a huge number. So it also gives us an idea of what can be for this community as we build this program. So it's mutually beneficial for KU football, KU athletics, University of Kansas, the Lawrence community to help us build a football program. It just makes sense for everybody. And I, I look forward to working more with the university and the Lawrence community to help us uh, uh, make the fan experience coming in and out of the stadium even better. And we'll, we'll be doing that in the weeks and years to come. Um, finally, I'll just say, you know what? We hired Coach Miles because we want to build a program. We want to build a winning program. We want to build a championship program. We're taking a step. Uh, we didn't get in the condition we're in uh, prior to his arrival overnight. We won't get out of it overnight, but I am optimistic. And, and I want to thank one thing, too, I want to thank, and that is the single ticket buyers, the season ticket buyers, those donors that have invested through Break the Cycle, they're going to be the reason we are able to lift this program up. They're going to be the reasons why we do break the cycle. We're going to invest in our program, and we're going to recruit our way out of the situation we're in. And again, it won't happen overnight. We've taken a step. I have great confidence in Coach Miles and his staff and their abilities to lead this program. We wanted to win every game. Uh, we didn't, so we didn't meet our expectations. Uh, no, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist. I don't, you guys asked at the beginning here, what's the success for you? I don't know. I think we saw improvement. You know, we, we only saw three wins. I think we saw other games that, wow, we competed in. You look at the Texas game, I mean, we were one minute and ten seconds away from a victory there. And I, I mean, that, that would have been huge for our program, but we're closer. We're far closer than we have been. And so, you know, we're never satisfied. We're not satisfied with three, with three wins. Uh, but again, we think we've made progress. I think if you watched our football team compete, I think you would say we've made progress. Uh, we have to continue to make progress. And I think the recruiting efforts that our coaches are in right now are going to be a big part of that progress. You know, we, we've got to, again, recruit our way uh, out of the situation we're in. And I think we've, we're making a good start on that. Last year we did with a short period of time, and now this year is even more important. To continue to prepare for success, meaning behind the scenes, our marketing, our tickets, our event management, our fan experience, we have to prepare for those successes before they arrive. And then the obvious answer, our team has to, to be better on the field. They have to win more games for fans to get excited. So what we do administratively is we got to make sure we put the plans in place ahead of time so when we have that success, we don't know when it's coming, but we know it's coming. And when it comes, we're in position to take advantage of the success. So that's what we're working hard. Coaches and staff are working on building teams, getting recruiting players, making them better, developing them. We're working on getting our stadium better, fans in and out, parking, traffic flow, all those things so we can take advantage of success when it comes. <clears throat> Jeff, you talked a lot about the uh, the staff, the support staff, and, and putting more money and, and more bodies in, in those types of positions. Are there specific examples or even just a general something you can point to that says, hey, this, this benefited us in this way this season? You know, on the analysts and the coaching front, you know, I, I, again, I think that's a coaching question, you know, uh, but certainly just having them – they are having the uh, staff available to do the analysis that takes time and effort to do. Having those 
uh, analysts in place to do that for the coaches, I think helped us immensely. There's no question about that. And, and I think the other area is recruiting, and, and we're seeing the investment. You know, we've got till December 18th to bring this class home, and I'm confident we will, but I think we're, we are having a very good success because we have that infrastructure behind the coaches, so they're prepared. Coach Miles is prepared, and they've got their targets lined up, and they're not grabbing the last available people. We're going out and recruiting people that have many options. So I think that's a sign, and, and I don't, it, without that infrastructure behind it, I, I don't think we're in position to do that. Uh, how are you kind of feeling at this state about your kind of proposal, your idea about the putting scholarships up to 30, you know, and then was it 30 and 50? Is yeah, kind of that's a great question. You know, that's something, again, uh, behind the scenes we're working very hard on, and it's been, you know, it's surprising to, surprising to me in some areas it's been a harder sell than others because, and it may have been my failure and others to communicate the positives uh, versus the negatives of it. But, um, you know, the, uh, the Mid-American Conference was actually the first one to put the concept forward and support what, what I had uh, laid out. Uh, we have come back in, and since time worked with the Big 12, and so in order to get the Big 12 on board to support, uh, we needed to adjust it. We went 35, knowing that that probably wasn't gonna work, but it, it, it's now the proposal is down to 30 in one year. Uh, then 20 the next, 50 over a rolling two-year period. Uh, the Mid-American uh, Conference has signed on to that. That's a really good sign because you have a group of five schools supporting as well as uh, the Big 12 Conference now and, and a, a Power Five school. So uh, it'll come up for vote in January, and uh, I think it has a, a uh, I think it has a good chance of being. Uh, uh, voted in and then you know next year we would have that opportunity to go up to a 30 all schools would would have that opportunity to go up to 30 but then again you always have to keep in mind it's a rolling uh, it's 50 over two years so if you got 30 in one you only have 20 in the next so hey Jeff over here uh, with the nine game big 12 football conference schedule and looking at scheduling teams going forward do you and coach miles have an idea of what type of opponents you're looking for for those three non-conference spots that you schedule out in the future, what you're looking for in each one of those games? Well, sure. Uh, you know, and again, with a nine-game schedule, it, it, the scheduling philosophy is different than the, the previous institution uh, I was at. But, you know, certainly you want to use those three games to uh, prepare for the Big 12 uh, conference and, and prepare you to hopefully win a Big 12 uh, conference title because a conference title is what, uh, you know, make, is going to make the difference now and in the future if we see changes coming to the college football playoff system. So winning your conference championship is the most important thing. So we build that non-conference schedule to try to help us do that. And you know, we do have the additional requirement that we have a, another uh, Autonomy 5 school uh, scheduled in that non-conference schedule. So, you know, we've typically had an FCS, we've had a, a group of five, and we've had an Autonomy 5 in those three games. And that's the philosophy for now. We'll continue it because that's what the, the uh, rules do. Yeah, well, first of all, the, um, the practice facility has been, you know, a much needed addition. And I think the timing of that coming on when Coach Miles came on board has really given us a chance to go out and recruit, recruit at a different level. So facilities are important. You know, uh, we, we know we've, it's been decades we've talked about the arms race and, and athletic facilities and it's real and it exists and it has an impact. And, you know, we don't need to look any further than Rock Chalk Park on our own campus to see how it, it resulted in a Big 12 tennis championship and now our Big 12 soccer championship this year. So facilities are important. So indoor facilities outstanding. You know, we also talked about, you know, the Break the Cycle Fund. You know, our goals are raised $25 million over five years. We're excited because we're over $16 million already in not even two years. So we're well on our way to, to hitting that goal. But now we're, we've started the master planning process for not only David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium, but really looking at all of our facilities for 5, 10, 15, 30 years down the road. What is it we're going to need? What is it we're going to want? 
want. And we're going to put that plan in. And, you know, those plans can be changed over time, but we're going to have a plan in place to work through. We're starting work with, you know, our selected architect is populous, and we're working them with a review of, of Kansas Memorial Stadium. And we're starting to, just at the beginning of what the stadium could and should look like, we're at the beginning of developing the financing plans for the stadium. And again, I will tell you, we're just at the beginning of that. Um, but, you know, we'll be turning our sights to that uh, now, but it depends on success in the program and the uh, interest in our major supporters uh, to contributing to, to that stadium build. It is a, you know, it is a, it is a needed project, um, but it's one that needs to be strategically timed for and executed.